My name is Jim McDonald. That is my name. I am Irish. Any Irish in? Yeah. I never realized how Irish I was, so I took one of those DNA ancestry tests. Came back 96.4% Irish. 3.6% blood alcohol. <laughs> is 100% Irish. <laughs> I like alcohol, but I don't party anymore. That's a young person's word, right? Party? You could party in your 20s and 30s, and that's acceptable, but you can't be middle-aged like me and say you're a partier. You're not a partier. You, my friend, have a drinking problem. <laughs> Some people spice up the word. They pronounce it partay. Ever heard that? They come up to me after the show. They go, Jim, would you like to come out with us and partay? If you say that, you have to stop. Because when you pronounce it partay, you sound like you've had a head injury. <laughs> and you need speech therapy. <laughs> I'm trying to act my age. I'm middle aged. I don't want to be young. But I don't try and act young like my uncle he tries to use hip lingo. He's 64 years old. I wear Doc Martin shoes. He goes, hey, Jim, you rocking the Doc Martens? Are you rocking the Docs? No, I have bunions and these are orthopedic. <laughs> At least this guy's job has kept me in shape. I haven't gained weight my entire career, and you can too, just follow my plan. Part one, eat less than a thousand calories a day. Impossible? Not if you do what I do. Part two, earn less than $9,000 a year. <laughs> well, I may be skinny, but I'm also hungry. <laughs> Last time I did my taxes, I thought, I've been doing this since college and have barely made expenses. That's when I realized I am more than just a comedian. I am a non-profit organization. <laughs> we never had money growing up. I remember asking my parents if we were poor, and they told me, you'll always be rich as long as everyone in your family loves each other. <laughs> So we're middle class. <laughs> Money isn't everything. My mom always told me, appreciate the things in life that can't be bought, like sunsets or starry nights or fresh fallen snow. That way it won't be such an adjustment if you have to live outdoors. <laughs> I can't even afford to eat correctly. I was in London last summer. I got food poisoning. I lost six kilograms. See, a lot of Americans don't understand that because it's metric, but I did the math, and six kilograms is over $80,000 in cocaine. <laughs> that joke works better in Miami. <laughs> I was in London for a wedding, which I've never done. And the longer I've been single, the more my family's opinion has changed. At first they thought, well, he's probably just being really choosy. And after 10 years, that became, do you think he might be gay? <laughs> but not anymore. Now they're certain I'm gay and way too choosy. <laughs> One girlfriend accused me of fear of commitment, but that is not true. I've been with the same cell phone company eight straight years. I commit just like my parents, and I'm going to stay with that cell phone company just like my parents because I'm on their plan. <laughs> and she really wanted to get married. Once a month, she'd have this nightmare where she was dressed in a wedding gown. She'd run up the steps to a church and she couldn't get inside. You know what's weird? I have that exact same nightmare. But in mine, I'm inside the church holding the door. <laughs>
But she cheated. That's why I found out. You can tell a lot about someone by how they react if you ask to borrow their smartphone. If they refuse or get defensive, that's a bad sign. But if they hand it over and give you the password, you can be pretty sure they have another phone. <laughs> I always date women that are my age, because I have a really old car. If I had a brand new car, people could see a girl in her 20s get in and think, well, that guy's just got money. But if they see her get in my 78 Toyota Corolla, that's an Amber Alert. <laughs> I've never been married. I always used to say, well, I travel for a living, but that is no excuse. Professional athletes travel, and they have wives and children everywhere they go. <laughs> I don't have any children. I do sponsor a girl in India for a dollar a day. The first month, she sent me a picture of her family's house, so I sent her a picture of my studio apartment and that's when she started sending me money. <laughs> and I always call it a studio apartment. That way, if I invite a woman back to my studio, it sounds like I'm an artist. <laughs> so we get there, and I have to explain, look, I'm kind of a starving artist, so we can watch Netflix, but I'm gonna need your password. <laughs> and a television, we're gonna need a television. <laughs> But there are advantages to a studio apartment. If I had a one-bedroom, I'd have to talk a woman into going in there. But in a studio apartment, I can get a girl from the dining room into the bedroom just by moving a pizza box off the couch. <laughs> I am broke, man, but I'm in a good mood tonight because I just finished a book by Susie Orman called The Nine Steps to Financial Freedom. And my new financial plan is to marry Susie Orman. <laughs> I used to worry about my credit cards. Then I read that the average American has over $9,000 in credit card debt. So I am way above average. <laughs> Even the credit card companies think so. Every time they send me a statement right next to my balance, they always write the word, outstanding. <laughs> Last month, America's Press called me up to go, Mr. McDonald, your balance has been outstanding for the past two months. Listen, I just got back from Vegas, so next month, you are gonna be so proud. <laughs> Now I got the cash back rewards card, because I figured out if you charge over $5,000 a month, you can get enough cash back to make your minimum payment. <laughs> Last month, MasterCard sent me a letter that said, final notice. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> I didn't think those guys would ever give up. I'm in a good mood tonight, because tonight, for the first night, I'm wearing my brand new shirt from TJ Maxx. <laughs> Retail price, $60. TJ Maxx price, $20. It had some imperfections, like it used to be a dress. <laughs> but I took it to a tailor, he changed it into a shirt, and $38 later, I saved two bucks. <laughs> That's my new thing this year. I'm trying to dress better. I think women appreciate that. So online, I looked up the top 10 fashion mistakes made by men as rated by supermodels. And some of you guys are thinking, Jim, you're never gonna be with a supermodel. And I say, look, supermodels get drunk too. <laughs> some of them partay. <laughs> Number one fashion mistake made by men, cargo shorts. <laughs> Women hate them, unless you're married. Because <laughs> if you're married, people will see your wedding ring and your cargo shorts and think, well, that 
guy's wife just wants to make it impossible for him to cheat. So if she buys you cargo shorts, that is not a gift. That is birth control. Number two fashion mistake made by guys, sports jerseys, especially on a first date, unless you're going to the game at the stadium and you're on the team. <laughs> I would like to let the young women in the crowd let, let you know that I do not have any tattoos on my body because I was raised in a family where I was taught to treat my body like a temple. But when I see someone with tattoos, I still think their body is a temple. I just think that temple happens to be in a really bad neighborhood. <laughs> I would also like to apologize to the women in the crowd because I don't have any tears or holes in my jeans. That's the style now. If you have tears or holes in your jeans, you're in style. I do not have tears or holes in my jeans. However, my underwear <laughs> more than makes up for it. Do you have holes in your underwear, sir? No? How do you put them on? I got that joke off a Dixie Riddle Cup. <laughs> I was just in London, England, yeah, and I stayed at this hotel that was supposed to be haunted. They told me there's this ghost that turns on lights and TVs. I didn't think about it till one morning I woke up and someone or something had finished all the liquor in the minibar. <laughs> So I refuse to pay those charges. Because when it comes to supernatural, there's two types of people, those that don't believe and those that negotiate at checkout. <laughs> Through there are my new favorite airline, British Airways. And they're my favorite, because on every British Airways flight, all alcohol is always free. Next month I fly from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, I booked my ticket on British Airways. <laughs> We have to change planes in Hong Kong, but I don't care. <laughs> it showed the movie Taken on the flight, but before it began, it said the movie was edited for content and modified to fit the screen. And Liam Neeson is six foot four, so he wasn't in it. <laughs> it was Danny DeVito and it sucked. <laughs> I also showed my old girlfriend's favorite movie on the flight, Dirty Dancing. And at first I wasn't sure if I would like the movie Dirty Dancing, but after watching it with her 47 times, I became sure I didn't like my old girlfriend. <laughs> but luckily the movie stopped working. And if you wonder how long it takes before a movie stops working, I figured out if you put the DVD in the microwave, <laughs> it's less than a minute. She also loved every show by Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. She told me he's a sir, because the queen made him a knight. And now that he's a knight, if the queen is ever attacked, it's his responsibility to protect her. He is a knight. In my lifetime, the queen is knighted the following individuals. Andrew Lloyd Webber, Paul McCartney, Mick Jagger, Elton John. If the queen's ever attacked, she's toast. <laughs> I told that joke in London. Some woman came up to me after the show and said, your act is rubbish. Look, I'm from the United States of America. My act is not rubbish. My act is garbage. <laughs> Last winter, my old girlfriend and I flew to Hawaii. I don't know if you guys know much about American history, but she explained to me that Hawaii is where they filmed the movie Pearl Harbor. <laughs> If you haven't seen it, here's the plot. It's 1941, and an American nurse falls in love with two different pilots at the same time. And the acting, and the dialogue, and the story are so bad. Halfway through, the Japanese attack to try and stop the movie. And then someone, or something, put the DVD in the microwave. 
I go to Italy next summer. So my friend taught me these survival expressions. He said, in southern Italy, all you have to know how to say is, Yo sentito glispare, ma non ho visto niente. Which means, I heard the gunshots, but I didn't see anything. <laughs> in northern Italy, all you have to know how to say is, Ed oro ci si penso, yo no sentito glispare. Which means, now that I think about it, I didn't even hear the gunshots. <laughs> I was in Germany two years ago performing for the troops. Yeah. They were the German troops, but thank you. <laughs> Let me tell you, they are precise in Germany. When they say the plane leaves at 10.15 in Germany, they mean 10.15. It's not that way in America. When we say the plane leaves at 10.15, we mean October 15th. <laughs> the Montreal Comedy Festival, that was exceptional, because the French Canadian women are so beautiful. Unfortunately, the only thing I know how to say in French is, voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? Gitchi gitchi ya ya dada? Mocha choka lata ya ya? It's a song, sir. All the airport announcements in Montreal are bilingual, so if you listen close, you can pick up some French. You hear something like, American Airlines, flight number 11 has been delayed 20 minutes. The Americans are so stupid. Their plane is slow, because they are all so fat. Oh my gosh. You might not know what to look at me, but I'm getting into the environment this year. Anybody like me trying to help out the environment, do their bit? Anybody? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Stop using straws, because I found out they end up in the ocean, so I'm going back to rolled up dollar bills. <laughs> If you laughed at that joke, you just told me a lot about your history. <laughs> and snitches get stitches. <laughs> you don't have to flush the toilet every time, do you? You waste water. Use the old rhyme. If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. If it's green like the sea, you have an STD. <laughs> I don't use the toilet paper when I use the public restroom anymore because that ends up in the ocean too, so I just bring a receipt from CVS. <laughs> let, me tell you everybody, let me tell you something, everybody. If you use this instead of toilet paper, you can return anything to CVS. <laughs> and they will trust you. So I'm single, I have to stay in shape, that's the rules. Right now, I'm training for the LA Marathon. Yeah. Every day for two hours, I go out on the sidewalk, drink beer, and yell at strangers, looking good. <laughs> I do work out, I think the kind of workout you choose says a lot about your personality. Like my friend Nick takes boxing classes, and I do yoga. So if we're in a bar and a fight breaks out, he wants to be able to defend himself, and I want to be able to squeeze out of an eight-inch bathroom window. Because <laughs> I will not fight for any reason, and some guys try and provoke you. Your girlfriend's ugly. Oh, yeah? Well, you should see her without makeup. <laughs> My brother-in-law is even healthier than me. He's a vegetarian, and I eat meat, so he is always on my case. Look, man, if you went out behind the scenes at a slaughterhouse, you would become a vegetarian. Look, I used to work at a restaurant. If you went out behind the scenes at the salad bar, 
you would become an alcoholic. When our cauliflower turned green, we just called it broccoli. Every time I eat something bad, he's always on my case. One time I was gonna eat a hot dog, he's like, do you know what's in a hot dog? No, nobody does, each one's different. Dog is something you have to eat on faith. One time I bit into a hot dog and I hit something hard. Did I spit it out? No, I didn't want to know what it was. I swallowed it. Could be bone, could be wood. Either way, I need the fiber. Yeah, I'm gonna live a long life because vegetables are filled with vitamins. Well, I'm gonna live even longer because hot dogs are filled with preservatives. You might be healthy, but I am embalmed. If they cremate me, I will burn forever. Go to Vegas after this. You guys ever been to Vegas? Oh. If you haven't been, it's your first time. Bring your golf clubs. Because after you've been out all night gambling, the next morning, you're going to want to go to a pawn shop. <laughs> last time I was in Vegas, I went to a wedding. Big scandal. We found out the bride was pregnant. Shock my parents because they're Catholics and Catholics believe you are not supposed to tell anybody. <laughs> they should know because they had six kids because Catholics don't believe in birth control. My grandparents had 17 kids, so they didn't even believe in self-control. <laughs> My mom's desperate to get me married, but she's very indirect. She'll say stuff like, oh, I don't want to pressure you, but I want to have grandkids before I die. And I'll say, I don't want to pressure you, but you might want to have another baby. <laughs> One time I took a woman out, when she found out I'd never been married, she asked me if there was something wrong with me. That's kind of rude. I would never say that to her, because she was divorced, so I knew there was something wrong with her. <laughs> And I got nothing against divorce people. A lot of my friends have been through it, so I've seen how painful it can be. That's why people cry at weddings. <laughs> That's not family. Those are divorce people having a flashback. <laughs> but if I do get married, I'll never get divorced because I'm a Catholic. We don't get divorces. We get annulments. It's a statement from the church. Your marriage never even existed. So all you got to do is get rid of the photographs. You ever go to Walmart and see those picture frames of the people already inside them? Those are the Catholics. <laughs> That's it for me, you guys. I'm a very nice Hi, I'm Jim McDonald. First of all, I'd like to say thanks so much for watching my special. It means a lot to me. Put a lot into it. Hope you enjoyed it. Now comes a part where you get to demonstrate, if you so choose, monetarily, how much you enjoyed it. Below me are some boxes where you can automatically assign a tip to me, or you can write in your own amount. It's up to you, completely up to you. But I have to say, if you don't tip, this plant may die. So thank you so much for supporting live comedy and Dry Bar in particular, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.